Tommy. How are you doing? All right, all right. Uh, lazy Sunday, lazy Sunday. Well, Sunday is made to be lazy. Yeah, true, true. We need to, to relax sometimes, not only working all the time, or we should try to relax. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's that that's how it goes for me. I was working on Saturday evening and I, I only had this one day off, so Yeah. I'm I'm trying my best here. Yeah. I see. Um <laughs> let's start to talk about uh, your upcoming album because uh, now during the spring you will release your first solo album. Uh would you mind to tell us more about uh, about your music and this album? Um <clears throat> it's uh probably somebody would think that uh if I'm making a solo album, that would be like a guitar wankery or, you know, like uh, shred, not shred stuff, but keep like solo or something like that, you know. And uh, usually guitarists who make, make solo albums, they tend to be like guitar wankery, if you if you will. And uh, <clears throat> this is a, a complete completely different thing. Uh, this is basically like, I had this one band I was playing with this one band a couple a couple of years ago and the band was mainly doing acoustic stuff kind of like uh probably if you know Taneli Jarva yeah the uh for, former singer of uh Sentenced uh he just released an acoustic album and uh for uh, I was I was happy to see that uh he's basically doing almost the same stuff not same stuff but same idea you know uh, I think we are both trying to uh, <clears throat> find the heaviness somewhere else than from the uh, distorted guitars, you know. But uh, yeah, I was playing with this band a couple of couple of years ago, and then I left due to some uh, some reasons. And uh, I had the a couple of songs in my drawer, and I was thinking about what what should I do with them. And uh, I was kind of like uh, not not knowing what to do and then uh, I had a birthday. I turned 40 years ago, three years ago. And, uh, and friends of mine threw me a party and they collected uh, collected uh, some uh, kind of like a fund to, uh, for me to get my own home studio where I'm sitting right now. So I was thinking about maybe if I sh just should uh, do the songs by myself. And uh, I started recording them bought some stuff, some microphones and, uh, you know, audio equipment and stuff and, uh, and just recorded them. Uh, and, and next, next thing, you know, I was like having uh, nine songs out of the blue and, uh, yeah. Then I contacted, uh, inverse records, <clears throat> Jaakko and asked if he would be willing to, uh, release the album and he loved it. And, uh, here we are. So, Long story short. Yeah. And uh, what are the songs about? Um, you released so far two singles, This Summer and uh, the other one I have to read because Drywall, because I didn't remember the name. Um, yeah. And they, they, they are really good. And they are... Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, people maybe are thinking that we are talking about the uh, super rock thing, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah. We are talking now about more uh, on uh, blues, jets, uh, uh, atmospheric music. But yeah, that's is is that's all the, the album like those two singles, or uh, did you ex experiment uh, in other areas? There is some little experimentation over there, and I think drywall maybe is is a song that is. It's a little bit different than other songs on the album, but mainly I would say the rest of the album is mm, probably a little bit more like this summer, kind of like some friend of mine listened to the album and and uh, he was like, he, he told me that I can I can tell you've been, been listening to Opeth. It's kind of like, you know, if, if you know Opeth uh, Damnation album, like tw 2002 or something like that. It's kind of like in the same vein uh yeah 
kind of like that. Yeah. And uh, in a, a drywall, there is a uh, Iro Salmi. And uh, yeah. what I have yeah. uh, uh, read is that uh, he was your teacher in elementary school. Yeah. This, this yeah. is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, thirty years ago, I was uh, I was in elementary school, and uh, I I I was like probably I've been like maybe playing guitar for a, a year or something like that, and then I went to the upper grade, I don't know how to say it in English, but Ulaste, and uh, and uh, on seventh grade, we had our uh, music uh, music uh, music grade, or so to speak. I I met my music teacher Iro and uh he's a jazz pian pianist and he, he was great. I remember I was like 13 and and he profoundly shook my world like from the very beginning. I remember watching him play piano and he was so great and uh I I just was like blown away by his talent. And uh so and at one point some point he uh kind of like maybe saw that I might be uh, an aspiring musician, if you will. And uh, every time we had like uh, guitar, uh, guitar playing on the, uh, on the, on the class or drums or bass, every time he was like pointing me out from the, uh, from my, from my desk that Tommy come and show us uh, a minor on the guitar, come and show us uh, C major or whatever. And, uh, Tommy, come and play uh, drums, play some basic beat and play, play bass. And every time it was always me. And uh, so uh, he probably saw saw it coming, maybe. Yeah. But yeah, he, he he's a uh, I love the guy. And a uh, few years ago, maybe like uh, maybe like six, seven years ago, I met him. Met him first time, like after like twenty five years. I have not seen the guy, and and I saw him uh on this gas station he was standing in line before me and and he suddenly turned around and he was like hey tommy what's up and i was like oh he remembers my name <laughs> and uh started to talk a little bit uh and uh yeah, it was fun fun to see him after a while since we're kind of like a of course he's a professional musician whereas i am not but uh anyways we share the same kind of like uh humor and everything uh he's a great guy and when i had this drywall song i was already thinking about adding some piano but since i don't play any keyboards or piano i was suddenly thinking about him and uh and i then i just found out his number and uh called him uh, and he was to my luck he loved the song and uh was willing to do it and so he came to my home studio and we played a couple of times and uh Okay, now I have the song, great piano playing and everything. Then I was starting to think about making a making a video out of it. And uh, then I contacted him again, and I was like, I hope I'm not like interrupting him, uh, like like harassing him too much or anything like that. And uh, so uh, he was like, okay, I, I'll come come and play in the video if you want me to. And, and it was great. It was fun. We had much laughter and. Uh, remembering old times from like 30 years ago of course i was like 13 back then and he was like 30 or something like that he's yeah. i think he's like a little bit over 70 right now okay. but if you are if you if you anybody is willing to uh go and check it out uh Iro Salmi from youtube he's done some crazy uh jazz stuff and some mellow stuff as well great guy yeah now i have something that is a uh, like uh, uh running in my in my memories you i i'm not sure i may be wrong but did he uh do a collaboration with a metal band a few years ago Hero. yeah i have no idea one song i uh, i i will check i will check because i i don't know i'm you... sure but <laughs> yeah are you uh, uh, confusing him with Iro Rantala, maybe? I don't know. I will check and I will let you know if uh, if if I yeah, was yeah, confusing yeah. him with someone else. Because there oh, was yeah. something about uh, yeah, a pianist, uh, a 
jazz pianist, uh, but now now I cannot remember. I don't know why. Well, I let you know later, I, and maybe if someone think... is interested, I I could let know them too. <laughs> Yeah, I think I remember that Iro, Iro Randala, who I believe he played in Trio Töyke, who is a jazz pianist as well. I think he did something with Enzi Ferrum or Korpiklani or something like that, maybe. It was another band, so I don't okay. know. I, I, will, I will let you know. It, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I did an interview with that band a few years ago, and we yeah. were talking about how they start uh, how they contact this uh, this artist but i cannot remember but yeah. he's not your only guest you have uh, also Derek Sherinian if i'm pronouncing yeah. the name right because i'm really yeah. bad <laughs> and um how did you get this collaboration with him uh that was actually a uh, uh, fairly simple uh, he when covid hit of course, a lot of musicians were kind of like a, between a rock and a hard place. And uh, I am following Derek in, uh, on Facebook. And he was like uh, <clears throat> posting stuff that are you releasing or making some music? Hit me up with a, uh, with an email so we can talk if you, if you w want him to uh, do some keyboards or stuff, you know. So I was like intrigued. And I had these songs, kind of like the very raw versions of the songs. And uh, so I sent him a message, and uh, I think it was like under five minutes when he responded to me that he was willing to do it. Of course, he wanted a little payment out of it, but uh, that is understandable. But So he did some stuff over there, and it was like basically the second take. The first take was a little bit different, and I was a little bit <laughs> scared to ask for another, but... Uh, the second one was great, but that is as simple as that. Okay. And uh, there are other guests, am I right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure what it has been like published, but uh there are a couple of interesting guests coming up as well. So we have to wait uh, until your album is released to to get to know more. And uh... Yeah, yeah. One one of the songs with one one other guest is premiering uh, next month as a single so so there is not that much to wait and uh, when, yeah. when should be released the album <clears throat> uh, at first it, it was uh, scheduled to be released uh, on uh, March but I think uh, I think it might be April at, at mm -hmm. this point yeah yeah so let's wait uh, yeah, just uh, check out the uh, social media. So, yeah, so we will yeah. know. Yeah. Now yeah. I was thinking, uh, do you remember uh, when we meet? I think it was like 2010, 11. Uh, I no. remember seeing you. Maybe 2011. No? Yeah. Yeah, in Tampere. In Tampere, right. Yeah, Were you talking yeah. about uh, uh, Bud Spencer and Terence Hill? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I, I actually, I have a couple of a uh, couple of uh, paintings, if you will, of Bud Spencer and Terence Hill yeah. over there. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, I can send you pic pictures afterwards. Okay. The nice. camera <laughs> angle, camera camera angle is so good right now. I don't want to mess it. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, it was after the gig that you play with 8-4. Yeah. There was Crystallic and still someone else. I can't remember what other. Oh, I didn't remember that Crystallic was there as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was there because uh, uh, Arto, the bass player of Crystallic, uh, uh, told me, come to see since I was uh, on holiday. In Tampere, it was like uh, yeah, yeah, I put it on the list. Then I was I was there, and then uh, at the end of the gigs, I remember yeah. we went to um, well Tamarkovsky area yeah. and uh, drinking beers and chatting. 
That's what I yeah. remember. I don't remember really what everyone was talking. I remember that someone was telling that uh, Stratovarius is a pop. <laughs> That's something oh, okay. I remember. And I was a bit like, I like Stratovarius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I have no recollection. Yeah, that's that's so far what I remember, but it's been uh, <clears throat> so long ago, and uh, yeah, we didn't met after that. <laughs> so I hope to to meet you at some point. Maybe if you come to Pori to play, it will be nice. Yeah, I have a lot lots of friends in Pori. I used to play in this Pori band from Pori called Moros Principium Esten. Yeah. But yeah, every now and then I I visit Pori. Actually, I was there last summer. Okay. Uh, the singer, singer of Morse Principium Est, Ville Ville Villian, and uh, his daughter. I'm uh, I'm the uh, kummiseta of his daughter. The godfather, like yeah. A godfather, yeah. I was like thinking about uncle. Yeah. No, uh, not uncle. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. But uh, <laughs> but have. Yeah. Let's let's see. If you if you come to play, so maybe I come and take some photos. Sometimes I got better than 2011. <laughs> that yeah, was, yeah. That yeah, was really that's... bad. I think I have a few photos and they are not good, but memories. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you have been playing in uh, several uh, bands. Uh, and are you still uh, active with uh, any band? Because I know that you were now uh, play. You play at least one gig with uh, Insomnium this January. Yeah, we yeah. went to Zurich, Switzerland. Switzerland. How was that? It was great, actually. It was it was fun. It was like I had like three weeks time to learn one one. A little over one hour set so uh i did that and went there and we played the show and uh every, everything was cool very very fun yeah was i've that known the, the guys for, time... for like 20 years or something like that so yeah. they're familiar guys okay okay yeah and um do you have are you active with uh, any band or are you just focusing on your solo career now uh, uh, it's a little weird to talk about career or, you know, I just made a couple of songs and decided to release them, but with my own name. So I'm not really thinking like, like a, be, as a, being a solo artist or anything like that. Or I'm not even sure if I'm, I'm going to play, play the songs live or anything ever. So, uh, I'm just kind of like, uh, being this. Uh, Varamies Palvelu guitar player nowadays, uh, you know, like, yeah, doing some, 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 yeah, yeah. Somebody contacts me and asks if I want to play some th somewhere, and and I'll either do it or or not. So basically, I don't, I don't really, I have some stuff going on, but uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I want to talk about them just yet. Yeah, yeah. But but I'm I'm. Uh, I'm playing with Insomnium next summer. A couple of more shows, so nice. This was not this was not the only one. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, and it's nice that yeah. you keep to be active and uh, that bands are contacting you to to work with them. So that's a cool thing. Uh, what yeah, uh, what gear do you use uh, mostly? Because for sure you have uh, more guitars, but there is the guitar the one that you that you like to play more. what gear am i using yeah for example uh, when you were on uh, on the stage with uh, insomnium i actually when i was we we were playing with insomnium uh, four weeks ago i think i had this one so okay. uh this is an art uh, uh, ibanez prestige rg uh yeah. Actually, I don't even remember the uh, uh, what, what was the mod name of the model, but but yeah, I'm mainly playing Ibanez since I've been endorsed by Ibanez for from like 2009 or something okay. like that. But of course, I have 
axes like these as well. So, so I I'm a guitar lover. So, yeah. How many guitars do you own? I have uh, like twenty, around. Oh, nice. Do you play all twenties yeah. or uh, some huh? are just? Do you play all twenties regu regularly or uh, do you just have some put aside? I pretty much play almost all of them. There are a couple ones that are kind of like uh, retired, like uh, this this one here. Uh, it's a little bit messy. This is. This is uh, the guitar I use with Hate Form a lot, a lot, and I think I played one sh one show with uh, when we had this death cover band called Death to Some. I don't, I'm not sure if you know about it, but uh, this has been basically after Hate Form got like split up. This is basically a museum guitar now, so okay. it just stays home, and I don't really play play it that much anymore for one reason or another. I'm not sure why. Guitars are so different, you know, <clears throat> they have these different qualities and uh, you just, uh, some guitar are like, uh, at some point I have this like, uh, like uh, at, now I'm playing this guitar and at some point I'm trying out this guitar and I realized that, uh, oh hell, this was like great guitar to play. I, I, I didn't remember, remember that. So it co goes with the uh, like, with your with your mind how you you know feel and whatever and yeah. if even if i have like some guitars that i don't really play i i i won't sell them i used to sell a couple of couple of guitars and you know they still bomb me that i did it yeah. no no never you should never sell your gear so i'm not doing that anymore i i, I might acquire some new guitars every now and then but uh so yeah Everything is staying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are like your uh, your children, let's say. <laughs> Not yeah, kind of like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's oh, yeah, talk about, yeah. Say say what you were yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, just about to say about the uh, uh, continue continue with the gear. So basically, I I uh, I have a. Uh, Line six helix stomp. I have one fractal X X FX uh, FX eight. Oh, sorry, AX eight, and uh, I have one Marshall JZM uh, nine hundred and uh, angle angle power ball and a couple of cabinets. Oh yeah, and uh, Victory amp. Uh, you know these little lunch boxes from yeah. England. I have the uh, Victory Countess, and I'm using that with my rock and roll band. We're playing kind of like Leonard Skinner and stuff like that. And it's a great amp. So there's my other gears besides guitars. So. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. And uh, what are you using uh, in the in the album mostly? <clears throat> Since the, the album is mostly acoustic, I have been using my 12-string 12 string Ibanez. I'm not sure if you can see anything. Yeah. It's a little bit messy in here. This one, and uh, of course, every everything I can get my hands on too. So, and this old Aria Pro, uh, this is my uh, uncle's, uncle's old guitar, and he, he died like 20 years ago, like accidentally. And this guitar was uh, in his funeral, and uh, this is a very dear guitar to me. So I fixed it up and put it all like uh, tip top and uh, uh, recorded a fair bit of stuff with this guitar. Plays great, feels great, everything is great. This is very nice guitar. Nice. And of course, I have I have have a couple of basses, so uh, one fretless and one electric. So use them as well. And you know everything like uh, like shakers and uh, uh, whatever you know. It's kind of like uh, toying around. You can basically do anything. Yeah. Play playing with like uh, these. I'm not sure what what's the name of these these stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know what they are so, in English. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this, uh, in Finnish, you say vispila. But uh, for instance, uh, drywall, the uh, the uh, percussion in drywall, I was recording, uh, I was playing the table, the same table, which is over here. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's so it's funny, you know. I like like you know like fucking around a little bit. Yeah, it's nice to to experiment and see what what happen. Does it work or not? It's always good to to try. Yeah, exactly. Experiment. That was the word I was trying to look for. Yeah, music m music is art, and art is. Uh, when someone experiment or get the inspiration and try to to get something with, with whatever the person got so yeah yeah it should not be something that is um, you know closed in a box uh, you have to do like this 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 no art is like yeah. freedom be free to do yeah. whatever you you love uh, and whatever you feel yeah exactly that's why I did the the album that is coming up. This my solo album. That's why the album is the way it is. So I think there'll be a couple of people who are like thinking, oh, "What the hell is he doing? Isn't he a metal 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 guitarist or you know shit like that?" So uh, I like you know like messing messing around a little bit. Yeah, but it's and of, like and of, it should uh, be. Yeah, and yeah. of course when I was uh, I was like. Around ten or something, I loved like uh, Gary Moore and Queen and some mellow stuff, you know, like uh, like ABBA and stuff like that. Until like early nineties, I came into like found found metal music. So I consider myself just a guitar player who plays different stuff. You know, I don't really see any any uh, difference with uh, let's say. Johnny Cash or Cannibal Corpse. I actually think Johnny Cash is far more heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes uh, there are some uh, genres outside of metal that are really hard to play. If we think about guitar or bass or uh, percussions um, or even singing, uh, there are certain styles that may be very difficult. And so it's... Uh, it's yeah. a, it's just music and yeah music should be like freedom yeah yeah exactly of course everybody has this like your own thing your own genre you like this one i love this one i don't love and you know stuff like that let's say like i've been always into death metal like death carcass pestilence uh scenic uh, stuff like that testament but i'm not i've i've never never been into like symphonic metal or kind of like a, you you mentioned Str uh, stratovarius stuff like that not not that much yeah yeah but it's good every everyone has his own uh, taste and uh, yeah, yeah i think of that I, that i have uh, when i start to listen to metal i start with a power and symphonic metal, and now, yeah. now I listen listen about of everything. There are things that I like more than other, but I really like nowadays the some death core. I really enjoy. Okay. Uh, then okay. it depends. It, it's sometimes just about on a album, a, a band, or the a song maybe so it's um, I I'm not that picky with music I know what I don't really like and this, uh, this yeah, kind of yeah. thing that nowadays I don't know about Finland but in Italy is a thing is this trap music trap 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 okay. I don't know it's uh, something that I was like listening uh, uh I was listening okay yesterday I was watching the UM uh, UM Co and then uh, yes. I was uh, also trying to see who is uh, winning in Italy 
<laughs> for San Remo. Um, yeah. And uh, I remember listening to the songs uh, of San Remo <laughs> and thinking, what the hell? <laughs> what am I listening to? Why they are all using this fucking auto tune that it's <laughs> an abuse of what they are doing. And uh, it's something that uh, they all sound the same. It was like, I'm listening to the same song over and over, even if there were different, not all the artists, but, but most of them. So that's something that I dislike. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 music in Eurovision is uh like 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 none 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 other anywhere else you know if you think about it the it's kind of like their own genre yeah so to say because uh yeah. if you open like ra open radio you'll never hear the kind of music they play in Eurovision I'm not sure why the Eurovision is this whole whole other animal except there are few songs that today they did to the radio there was one few years ago where she was from armenia maybe no it was not armenia or maybe yes anna lee yeah. and she made to the radio around the world and she just didn't di didn't do any great um result in eurovision but yeah it's okay. uh, it's uh i think it's interesting <laughs> uh i I like to watch. I think it's fun. I think it's something light to watch. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's good to discover some artists. Sometimes there are some really interesting ones that yeah, have yeah. To, be, to be, I I don't say follow, but maybe deep in and listen to their music also. So, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah the, I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of Eurovision. Yeah. <laughs> but like uh, when Caria was in there, uh, my wife forced me to watch it, so I had to watch it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I, I was also like last year quite, uh, quite involved. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, yeah. but it got me so much, and uh, then I was so pissed. But that's another story that no one maybe is interesting to listen here in this interview. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to metal music. And um, yep. how did you get into metal? When did you start to listen to metal music? Uh, I think it started like maybe like uh, uh, if you go all the way to the start, it was like 1986, something like that. I had this cassette uh, cassette containing like Dio, uh, Twisted, Twisted Sister, and of course I love these other other kinds of music back then. Like uh, that, uh, uh, is it like a Danish band? Uh, Aha, how yeah. do you pronounce it? Aha, Take Norve on me. Nor Norwegian band. Norwegian band. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So I love that song. It's still still a great song, but uh, I think it started started from there. Because I, I remember loving the Dio song. That was like the last in line. Yeah. And uh, and then I uh, I was not so like, uh, of course, I liked the songs, but I didn't like go and buy any cassettes until 1989 when I bought uh, uh, Trash by Alice Cooper. I remember like going to the going to downtown uh, this music store and uh, I bought the the vinyl. LP, and of course, yeah, around 88, 89, something like that. My uh, my cousin bought me as a birthday gift, gift uh, and Justice for All, all by Metallica. So I would say Metallica was, of course, a big factor in that, and Alice Cooper, because since Alice Cooper is not metal, but uh, you know the uh, he looks very hard, you know, yeah, like metalish guy at least in trash, you know the. Uh, the artwork when he's like standing there with the leather jacket and looking very bad. And I remember I was like nine years old and, and I was thinking that that guy is a badass. And if somebody was, was messing with him, he would like knock them out or something like that. And uh, after that, it was 
uh, like Metallica, then I found Megadeth, like when uh, Countdown to Extinction came out, 92. I remember like having my little cassette system beside the uh, my TV and there was like Headbangers Ball coming and I was like holding the like rec, rec record button ready to like record it like, you know, just put some volume on TV and record it like that. So you had to remain silent and be like very, very, very quiet. So uh, Me Me Metallica, Megadeth, and after that came like Amorphis, Tales from the Thousand Lakes, and uh, of course Sentenced. And I, I felt I remember falling in love with both of them, especially like Sentence Amok. Yeah. And then after after that, of course, I had to dig in the older stuff as well. And uh, North North from here is one of my favorite death metal albums. It's just outstanding. And the guys were like, they were like. Uh, 17 year year old or something like that it's crazy and uh i started to play guitar in 1993 and uh after that i met this one guy who i formed this one band with and he asked me if i ever ever uh, heard a band called death i was like no so that was that was it <laughs> i uh, bought symbolic and symbolic is to this day one of the uh, top three al metal al albums in my books. It's just What's the number one. Ah, uh, it's a little hard, but I would say that probably they're kind of like changing. At some point, I I might be thinking that Death is better than uh, number one. At some point, I would say it's Carcass and Hard Work. Yeah, a lot for a long time. My top three was like Me Meshuga. Destroy, raise, improve, uh, carcass, hard work, and uh, death, symbolic. But of course, I have to say that since I talked about sentenced Amok, Amok, that's a uh, that's a great album. Yeah, yeah. So that was basically the there, there was no turning. Yeah, no, no turning back after that. Yeah. I remember, yeah. like ninety three, I started to grow my hair, and uh, I I went. I was on sixth grade and my 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 big brother who is now has passed away uh, he had this long hair and he played played guitar and uh, I loaned his jeans that was like ripped from top to bottom and I loaned his boots kind of like these cowboy boots and I went to school and I remember I was like uh, told to go to the principal's office since it was like win winter time and the uh, they were like uh I was a naughty boy since they were kind of like uh, uh, they were afraid that I might catch catch a cold or something like that, you know. Yeah. And since I'm like, when I'm school, it's kind of like their thing to, you know, their responsibility. Yeah. To see that. Yeah, but I I, 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 think well. I still remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember that so well. A couple of couple of my classmates were like laughing at me like oh, what the fuck are you doing and I was like oh, I'm trying to be a rock and roll guy uh, oh good memories sweet memories <laughs> yeah 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 what was the first gig that you attend attended not played yeah uh I'm not sure if it was the first um I think I, since I'm a big fan of Kingston Wall, of course, one of the greatest Finnish bands. And uh, I remember I was like 12 years old and me and my friends, uh, there was this uh, kind of like free free festival in uh, Puolalan Puisto, Turku. And I remember me and my friend was like, uh, we took our bikes and just went over there and see all the people and watch uh, what, what was the boogie and everything. And uh and I have this slight, uh, you know, I, I'm suspecting that I have seen Kingston Wall live, but I just didn't know the band back then. But I remember when I had, uh, especially when they released this, uh, not the band, but somebody was like putting on YouTube these old videos from 92 when they played in Puolana Puisto Turku. And I, I watched the video and I was like having this huge flashback. I was like, oh, fuck, I think I have been there. But I have no proof. 
I, I don't know. And I didn't know the band back then. Uh, I just, I first uh, first heard Kings of War was uh, like 1996 and uh, Petri Valli died 1995. So I was a little bit late. Yeah. But I, I think that was, those those were probably the first ones. And after that, 1994, I was, uh, of course, my brother was a huge factor for me to uh, find, find like bands like Aerosmith and Pink Floyd and uh, uh, Poison. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Guns and Roses and uh, Tuketto and stuff like that. Yeah. The Poison one was a little, you know, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I was a huge, uh, huge Aerosmith fan already in 1993. And they released uh, what was the album? With the with the cow, uh, get a grip album released in 1994, and they were playing the same year. Actually, it was released 1993. Anyway, uh, Aerosmith played in Ruizrock 1994, and me and my friends went there, and we just uh, we went, uh, we didn't pay, you know, we just sneak our way in. And I remember I was like so so stoked to finally see like Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, who was like my guitar idol back then. Uh, probably more because of the looks, because I I think playing guitar. Let, let, if you're a guitar player, I always loved like Slash because he's not the most technical guy, but he's kind of like he, he's good, and he has the look. You know, if you look like yeah. a like a door, if you play like an angel, and look like a dork. It don't, doesn't do do the trick for me. So, so uh, I I remember uh, watching Joe Perry. He was like, uh, his abs were showing, and he was like playing cool, and I I loved it, loved it. And, and I saw that that gig. And it's crazy crazy that it's been thirty years, man. But yeah, and the same bill on the same day was this one band called Pride and Glory. If you know the band, yeah. So, so it was Zach Wilde's first band after the Aussie gig. Now, of course, he was still playing with Aussie, but uh, I remember watching that that gig and that that blew my mind. I was like, "Oh, fucking hell! I I have to get my chops chops up." And uh, after that, I went to the same uh, record store in Turku and uh, tried to find a Pride and Glory debut album, only album, of course. So uh, I bought that, and I still love that album. It's, it was great. So I, I would say probably Aerosmith and uh, Pride and Glory. And of course, I '96 I saw, saw Stratovarius, and I was was like uh, watching Timo Tolkki play, and I was like, oh, that guy is fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was that was what, that was what, Yeah. That was. What's your favorite song. guitar player? If there is one that you are. Uh, always impressed with i always loved slash i've always loved uh, mm, brian may gary moore uh, probably probably the one that if i'm thinking metal the guitar player that influenced me the most since i was talking a couple of minutes ago of the uh, importance of looks how how the guitar player looks, you know. So Dimebag Daryl was definitely one of those. I remember early nineties I saw like the video for This Love or uh, Mouth for War and I was like, that guy is so fucking cool and so so talented that uh, I fell in love with the the guy and that that was I think he he was the one of those guys. Yeah. And of course yes yeah, Sla slash same thing and uh I, I it's hard to pinpoint one guitar player. Yeah, really. yeah, there are so many. But I see what when you say you know that uh, uh, the presence uh, of the of the guitar player. I think that um, overall, you can listen to a perfect album, perfect musician. But when you go to see a band live, if they have not uh, charm, let's say, if the yeah. That that energy on the stage, it 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 kills the, the whole performer, and they can play perfectly. I mean, yeah, I have seen bands that are like really good, like technically, yeah. but on presence on the stage zero, and that really get get me bored. 
I, I can help. Qua, 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 qua. <laughs> exactly. It's like, uh, not. And then there are some bands or artists, even not from metal, because, you know, I'm going to, to take photos uh, normally at uh, Poris Pere, and there are a lot of artists that are far from, from metal that are playing some Finnish uh, pop or rap or whatever. But then yeah. when they are on stage, it's like, wow, what's what's happening? <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I I don't like their music, but the the energy that they are giving, it's fun for me that I'm taking photo is so fucking fun. And yeah. I, I, I just wear so YouTube is going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I did. I did a couple of times too. Yeah, I well, don't. Uh, may, maybe all my interviews are a bit like this, and now I was realizing. Oh, but uh, okay. I think that that's uh, when I put the video, and uh, they ask if uh, is this video for children. I always put no, it's not for children. So everything is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays like is a bit like like crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gotta love the old times. Yeah. 90s was great. I, yeah. lo I love the 90s, even though I was a little little boy back then. But yeah. Yeah. There was not all those, you know, kind of uh, protection if we want. It's a fake protection, in my opinion, because if you want to protect a child, well, I think there is other ways and maybe not to let them to be all the time with the phone in their hands this could be yeah yeah <laughs> that's another story and uh, let's get to my jar the jar of random topics what, what let's is that? see what what we get uh, i'm going to pick two different uh, topics and let's see what we are going to talk about the first one is gift so are you a uh, are you more that kind of person that like uh, receive or give gifts? Of course, it's nice to receive receive as well. But uh, I love giving, and I I should do it more. I admit it. If I was rich, I would probably give give a lot more. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. point is always the money. I also always say if I would. Be rich. I will buy to those person this and to the other person that. But uh, the reality is that uh, I'm moneyless, so <laughs> try to survive. <laughs> yeah, let's let's put it this way. It would be nice to give more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is any gift that uh, you receive that uh, that impressed you more that you you keep. Uh, in your memories or that you keep that that has the the biggest meaning for you uh, come again if there is a if there is any gift that someone gave you that you 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 have great memories about it that is something important for you ah oh. the first First thing that pops into my mind is uh, the Aria Pro, the guitar over there. Yeah. Since uh, that was given to me as a gift when my uncle died, uh, my uncle uh, got me my first guitar back in '93. And uh, when when he passed away, his brother, my other uncle, told me that I should get this guitar from the. Uh, it was like laying on the casket not on the casket, like on top of the casket. And he, he told me on the in the funeral that I, I should take the guitar. And I was like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be rude or anything like that. So I just uh, was, uh, was there the whole, uh, whole time, the whole service. And after that, I left. And I remember I was in the parking lot and my other uncle, who is now deceased as well, he, he ran with the guitar to the parking lot and he gave it to me and he said uh, my the other uncle whose guitar that was his name was Yarmo and uh, and he told me that Yarmo would have wanted you to have this guitar and I remember that and I was like in tears you know so that's one one kind of a like gift that 
has stuck with me and uh, stays with me forever. And yeah, yeah. and it's going to uh, at some point it's going to be my daughter's problem <laughs> as as all these guitars are going to be. Yeah, yeah. Is your daughter playing any instrument? Uh, no, unfortunately. My youngest one has has been showing some signs of uh, like uh, probably getting a hobby out of it. She likes to sing. We every now and then come to to this my music room or a studio or what whatever, and uh, we take one guitar. She she usually uh, picks one guitar. I want that guitar, and then we play play and sing some random lyrics and uh, random topics and uh, and uh, so yeah. Let's hope for the best. But yeah, let's hope. Two, it uh, sounds two... that maybe she is going to be a musician. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a good sign that I have like twenty around twenty guitars and two basses, and she can spot this spot which one is bass and which one is guitar. So, nice. and and she's young; she's like three years old. So, yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. But now let's get another topic. So let's see what's the okay. second topic that we are going to talk about. This one. Exciting. Movies. So what's your favorite movie? Um, Probably Big Lebowski. Yeah. I love Big Lebowski. It's kind of like one of those movies I watch like a couple of times every year. I love the first Halloween it's great. And uh, one of my all-time favorites that I was actually going to say first, but I, for some reason, say it now, is uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah. Uh, from 1992, which have, like, Gary Oldman uh, as a Dra as Dracula, and Winona Ryder, and unfortunately, Keanu Reeves. I, I have nothing against Keanu, but that was not his role. But I love the movie. They and the score, the score is fantastic. Wojciech Kilar, now deceased composer. Oh man, it, I actually I have that that uh, soundtrack on CD, and I listen to listen to it a lot. And when we, me and Tom Gardiner, the uh, the guitar player for yeah. Hateform, when we uh, composed the, the last album of Hateform, uh, Sanctuary in Abyss, uh, we listened to that uh, soundtrack a lot, like. <laughs> a lot yeah, yeah. so, so are probably you in, those yeah are you more into horror movie uh, what movie are you more into horror movie or what kind what mm -hmm. genre of movie you prefer if you if you go now to the tv and uh, you have to choose a movie uh whatever movie a gen genre what would it be if it's uh, one of when those I, when i was younger i loved horror movies and i still have old dvds of like you know hammer dracula's with chris christopher lee and like nightmare on elm streets and stuff like that but uh nowadays i don't really much uh, watch uh, that much of horror movies is uh because i i'm not a big fan of cgi and every Every movie nowadays is like filled with CGI. So, so I would love to see like uh, like makeups and stuff like that when everything yeah. was like you know innovative and and you know for ex for example when I watched uh, twenty years ago a little more than that uh, Lord of the Rings came out. I think it was like two thousand and one or something like that. The first one, uh, Fellowship of the Rings. I, w I remember watching the orcs in in awe since they, they were like looking so great. They had these crazy makeups and looking very badass. And I loved it. Okay, the movies had some CGI, but I was like, okay, I can handle this. But then they released Hobbit. And I tried to watch it like 15 minutes or something when the uh, first orcs came out and they were all digi digitally made and i was like wah, 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 you know yeah. uh, i didn't like that at all so i didn't even finish the movie yeah, yeah so that's 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 why i don't watch like new horror movies that much at least any like 
of uh, any horror movies with with like supernatural, you know, with some uh, like vampires or like ghouls or whatever. If I watch horror movie, it would be like something like uh, the movie Shh, if you know that. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. S S H H and uh, like strangers where when some maniac killer stalks somebody and. Stuff like that, and I love true crime documentaries. Like, uh, like uh, I'm not sure what was the name. Can can remember, but you know, like documentaries about some lunatics and yeah, crazy yeah. stuff. That that because I think that's far more scary than any digital digi digitally made made ghoul with seven thousand fangs. Yeah, and drooling and everything. So yeah. uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. I I understand what you are saying because you know, uh, I grew up watching horror movie, and I have always been like a big fan of horror movies. Uh, Dario, Ar Dario Argento. Dario Argento, yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, you know, then uh, I think that in the last, uh, I would say, twenty years more or less uh, the horror movie have been uh, quite weak and not scary and uh, you know you know what is going to happen so there is not that effect that wow so it's missing that something you know what you know why since uh, the filmmakers don't leave anything for the watchers or the beholders imagination if you watch old movies, it's like some some noise is coming over there and you can't see anything. So you have to use your imagination. What what is over there? What what was making that kind of noise? And now, whereas nowadays it's as I told you, some digital monster comes out and you can see all the fans and every little detail on his like uh, jaws and mouth yeah. and everything. And I I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, I'm agree. You should one should use more imagination yeah true true but now let's go and talk to the most important topic of this interview and it's pizza do you <laughs> like pizza i love pizza you can yeah. tell <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite pizza uh meaning like ingredients yeah usually it has been like uh uh, minced meat, ham, maybe uh, onion, and maybe like uh, like pepper. Yeah, and maybe some like blue cheese as well. But for since I've got a little bit older, I've grown to love like chicken pizza. Pizza. Okay. For like uh, this one great pizza place in in Turku, Pizza Peretz, which is uh, one of my favorites. They have this kind of like. Uh, Pizza with which has curry, uh, chicken, uh, blue cheese, and was it like a peach? Okay. And it's a, it's a weird combination, but it definitely works. You know, you were mentioning peach because uh, every time that I talk about the weirdest thing uh, about Finland for me <laughs> when I moved was that the because I came here as au pair. So the the weirdest thing mm. was that they were putting, the, the, the family were was putting uh, on the pizza peach. And for me, it was the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. How how about pineapple? Yeah, that's the next question. <laughs> because I don't, I don't like, uh, but uh, it's not about me. Uh, what do you think? Does pineapple pin, belong to pizza or not? Uh, if if I get a random pizza which has a pineapple, I'm okay with it. But if I get to choose, I won't choose it. Okay. Funny and funny thing. A few years ago, like maybe seven, six, seven years ago, I was on tour with Omnium Gatherum, and we played somewhere in uh, Spain. I think it was like. Uh, Malaga, something like that, and uh, the old drummer of Omnium Gatherum loved pineapple in pizza. So uh, before the show, we like uh, 
uh, write, wrote down pizzas we would l- like to have after the show, like after show food. So he got a pizza with with pineapple. I can't remember the rest of the stuff, but it had pineapple. So we have a big box, like plenty of boxes of pizza when we uh, get off stage. And everybody's like checking data, like on top of the, the like the pizza, not pizza, but the, uh, the, um, the box. What's the, uh, the box? Yeah. And the box, it says like this one has ham, this one has tuna, and this one has this and that. And there was the drummer's pizza, and there was like uh, pine, uh, ham, pepper, and there was like pineapple, and and there was a text after the pineapple. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the so the pizza maker was like wondering who who likes that kind of stuff. I remember <laughs> that that was that was fun. Yeah. Uh, where did you eat the best pizza ever? Uh, I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure. I was a few years back. I was in Rome, and we went to these couple of like, uh, they had these like slices, and yeah. I was, I remember, I was like, it was like. Uh, searching for the holy grail or something like that since you are like in rome and tasting local pizza and i was like a little little like uh bummed about it it was it, it was good but i was probably had my expectations like this you know so uh yeah i think i have to say uh of course any pizza is great when you're hungry as hell but uh, uh i have to mention that same pizza place again in Turku. If you're around here, go to Pizza Perez. Okay. P E R E Z. Okay. I I will uh, I will uh, go there when I'm in Turku. I will ask my yeah. friend. So let's let's yeah. go to it in this in this uh, pizza place. And uh, yeah. where did you get the worst pizza? Because this is also important to know. Uh first thing that pops into my mind is uh probably i don't really like koti pizza that much uh but nowadays i i used to hate them but nowadays i i'm okay with it but i still think they're a little bit uh, like boring maybe but i remember we were playing with hate form in Oulu maybe like uh, 15 years ago 10 10 15 years something like that and uh so we had these pizzas from the local pizza place, and obviously in all they have uh, they've been having this tradition of adding mayo mayonnaise on pizza on top of the pizza, and I remember only in all that was possible. I, I I've never tasted pizza with mayonnaise anywhere else like in Finland, so I remember trying that. And I was like, this is so wrong, kind of like it's some some ways this is like. Uh, it's kind of like a disgrace or something like that. Yeah, this but, is a horror but, story, yeah. actually. <laughs> <laughs> kind something. of. Uh, that's 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 quite horror, but uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> are you are you are you into mayonnaise in no, on pizza? No, yeah, it's I, weird. Actually, it's weird. Yeah, I, I I'm actually quite weird when it comes to like mayonnaise or uh, ketchup uh, thing. I don't care about those dressing i i really don't care if it will be by me i will never buy those i yeah i i don't need the them to exist uh if there is some um, in hamburger yeah ketchup and the mayonnaise work um but beside that i don't need also with french fries I don't need those. I just yeah. go ahead. But I know a lot of people that if they have to to buy every now and then to have always at home to to put with the food. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't have this. So so may, maybe I'm weird. I don't know. <laughs> oh, you're you're Italian. <laughs> yeah, but there are Italians that like ketchup, of course, not on pizza or pasta, but on uh, French fries uh, 
or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> With yeah. some heat, maybe sometimes, but mm. I I don't I don't feel this. But now we go to the question that uh, the the previous guest uh, uh, left you. So the question is. Have you been in Woken Festival and uh, what's the band you would like to see there even if the band doesn't exist anymore? I've actually never been Woken. Yeah. I've actually never been to Woken, but I'm going there this summer with Insomnium. Okay. Uh, nice. So, so uh, uh, I have been playing with Morse Principium as in Summer Breeze. Yeah, that's kind of like, almost kind of like Wacken now. Of course, Wacken is uh, like an institution. But uh, um, I would say probably Death. I have this DVD, Death Live in Eindhoven, 90, 98. Of course, 98, the lineup of, of that, that era was not my favorite, but if I would see let's say like a human era death or symbolic era or like individual thought patterns of course andy laroque would not be there playing live there was like a ralph santola or something like that but uh, i would say death probably or or pantera since i never saw pantera i was actually gonna see them 2001 it was like tattoo the earth or something like that and then the uh, 9-11 happened. So I had tickets and everything and the whole thing was canceled. So I was like, okay, I'm going to see them some, some other time. And, and then stuff happened. Yeah. But yeah, death, death was something that I would probably want to, uh, want to see. Yeah. Great. Now it's your turn to leave a question for the next guest. Uh, can you tell me who left this this question to me? I can tell who was uh, it was uh, Antti Juntila from uh, Af um, Kakstuatta. Okay, I know the band, but I don't know the guy. But uh, my question for the next next uh, uh, dude or dudette, am I right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm watching, I have this, uh, like, a uh, taulu, like a painting, not painting, but, uh, of Tom Waits, if you know Tom Waits. Yeah. One of my favorite artists. So, uh, I would probably ask, uh, what do you think of Tom Waits? Yeah. I was about to say that who is your favorite artist and why is he Tom Waits? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yes. There is a, there is a slight chance that he or she ha has never even heard about Tom Waits but Well, let's yeah, see. Was... Let's see what let's the, see. what the guest is going to reply on this question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we are at the end of this episode of Metal Pizza. Thank you so much for your time. It was really nice to chat, chat with you. Um, Likewise. Would you like, thank you. Would you like to say something to people that are watching or listening this episode? Uh, I was about to say stay metal, but since I, even I cannot stay metal, why why should anybody else uh, stay stay? Stay whatever. Stay, Stay true, true to yourself. To, to yourself. Isn't yeah, that right? Yeah. Good and right. Yeah. And buy, and buy the album when it comes out. Important. <laughs> if, if, if you are into depressing acoustic music. <laughs> Everybody needs some, some acoustic music uh, and depressing music. Uh, and yeah. We, we all need that. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully, hopefully see some of some of the people who are watching on the summer summer shows with insomnium yeah thank you 